Well, tomorrow afternoon it's on in Edinburgh, but JK, we're not starting here. We're starting back at home at Eden Park. This morning we're watching it took 80 minutes. Familiar territory thinking what happened in the 2011 Rugby World Cup, but what a performance from this Black Ferns team. An amazing, amazing afternoon, an amazing performance. What I suppose what a great showcase for the game. Oh, I just think incredibly courageous. You know, when you look at it from a technical point of view, you'll probably say the red card cost England, but New Zealand took advantage of that. The courage that the Wahine showed um, running it from their own goal line in the last 10 minutes, you know, I was I was dancing because that's what the what the uh, girls have told us to do. So I was in front of the screen. I couldn't believe it. I think that the courage they showed even to go up yep. in that last line out, um, just fantastic. And it's been a joy. It's been a joy to follow. It's been a joy to watch. Um, our Black Ferns have once again shown us that our game is beautiful, you can dance, you can smile, yep. you can have a good time. Um, diversity, all the things that they've brought has been amazing. You think about the coaching staff, you think about the management, you think about the commitment New Zealand rugby has started to make to the game and the fact that this is almost the culmination of 12 months of looking at themselves, making some really hard decisions, but then you enlist the likes of a Wayne Smith and the Graham Henry and all of that coaching staff and they come together. What they were able to create and turn around is, is truly remarkable and now I suppose the focus, and not now, because we want them to celebrate and we should celebrate, but now it's what we do from here, what New Zealand rugby does from here, which is so critical to not just their game, but to the game as a whole. Yeah, I think harness the wahine power that yep. we've um, created, um, encourage all our young wahine at school to pick up this game that we love. Um, let's get back to an aerobic game, which we've seen, yep. you know, the, the male game's probably more an anaerobic game, so let's try and look at those things. Um, night. Wayne Smith, I think he's done so <laughs> it's, much. It's a given, so, right? So it's much, done. So it's much done. for our game. Um, you know, Sir Graham's retiring. What what an amazing man that he's been. But we need to keep Wayne Smith involved in our game in some way. Yep. Um, he'll want to retire. We won't let him. No. Because he has this incredible ability and empathy for the situation, a knowledge of the game that he can translate into any any situation he walks into. I mean, he goes to Kobe, they win. Yep. Um, you know, he picks up the he picks up the Black Ferns when they were um, probably at their worst ever moment, and he has brought them to today. So that's pretty special. We can't lose that knowledge, um, and he needs to be, you know, crunched in the in the in the in the NZR in some way. Oh, well, give him a break. Give him a break. Just maybe for five minutes. Can have a week off, Smithy. Have a week, have a week off, take, Smithy. Take a week off, Smithy. <laughs> I tell you what, the All Blacks don't get a week off, and I know they were together this morning at their hotel, up watching, and were inspired by this performance in the Black Ferns. They've got their own challenge. JK made a number of changes for this Test match at Murray Field, taking on Scotland, or a team are really trying to find themselves as well. But the All Blacks have made a number of significant changes as well. You surprised by the changes? Are there risks from the coaching staff and the selectors going into this Test match? Well, I had. A discussion yesterday, really interesting. So, bald guys and grey headed guys um, from our era. Oh, sorry. <laughs> from our Thanks era. for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yep. um, from our era, um, probably want consistency of selection. Yep. But is that the future now? Seven changes makes people like us nervous because combinations, especially in 9, 10, 12, and 13, we would traditionally say that's a hard thing to do. However, is that the modern game? You know, we've changed a number of players. But it feels to me, Scotland are ready, man. I've been yep. in this in this town for the last two days and they think they've got a massive chance. But I've got this feeling that the All Blacks have come out of the adversity and it feels like they've, they've understanding the game that, that Ian Foster wants them to play. They've had an injection of new ideas from the coaching staff and it just feels confident. I've been here and with the team for the three weeks up until now and you get the sense that They've turned a corner, particularly in terms of their confidence. This is certainly a show of trust in a number of players, giving them this opportunity. It's a huge opportunity for a number of them to put a step forward and stamp their mark on not just this season, but maybe the opportunities they get next season. But the way they've started to play, the understanding, and I've talked about the fact the search they are on of, of how they were going to beat the rush defence. It's almost like, JK, they've gone back to the fundamentals, the raw basics of the game, the things, the simple things we've done well. We've probably just seen the Black Ferns do well, run, catch, pass, don't be very nice and direct. It seems as though they've gone back and simplified, but by the same token, they've intensified what they're doing. Do you like some of these changes and selections and opportunities, particularly guys like Akira Gawani, Anton Leonard Brown, David Havili? Do you like them getting this opportunity at this late season? I'm actually not worried about the selection changes. I'm worried about um, 
the continuity and understanding the players around you. That's all I'm worried about. I'm not worried about Havili, I'm not worried about Anton Lennon Brown, world class players. Um, it's the combination, you know, Barrett, um, you know, Bodie's been playing fullback, goes into 10. You know, um, Christie getting a start with Barrett. They played together, so that's okay. But it's those combinations that I worry about. And I think the first 20 minutes against Scotland is going to be the most important 20 minutes, right? Because what happens when you're lacking a little bit of combination yep. is that pass just doesn't go quite to hand. So for me, it'll be about starting well. And these guys are actually playing for the World Cup. And that's why I think you've got to take your hat off a wee bit to the selection and, and to foster to have that courage because you're getting on a roll. Well, right? let's be honest, you always wanted to know. You keep counting down the test matches. I get by the end of the season, we would have answered a number of questions. By the end of the game next week in Twickenham against England, we would have found out a number of things about this group across this 2022 season. Yeah, and look, the, the interesting thing for me is Dane Coles, Sam Kane, two of our leaders, two of our, our key players um, in the leadership group are at home. So, you know, Akira Yuani. Will he be start next year? I mean, you know, I love the man as a blues man, but that's irrelevant. But he might not be, but then Wednesday someone gets injured. Yep. Someone does their calf. You know, warm up, poor old Dane, you know, in the warm up against Japan and Cody's, yep. and, and you've got to jump in. So that is our game now. So I think it's a really, really big test for continuity early, put Scotland under pressure. They think they've got a sniff. And if we can nail it in the first 20, it's going to be a long day for them. Let's wrap there on, on the fact that this is a special city. This is a rugby city, Murray, Murray Field. Your memories of playing against Scotland, and you know we, we've both caught up with Gavin Hastings in the last sort of 48 hours, and we know what a great man he is and how much it means to him. He got close on a couple of occasions. But what does it mean to, for you to be here playing and watching this game? Well, white jerseys, I always remember. Yeah, that's you know, right. We yeah, had yeah. to play in white jerseys. I was talking to Justin Marshall about it yesterday. Um, so they're playing in lilac or something tomorrow, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that's right. at least we've got our black jerseys. I'm um, just the passion of these people. I love them. I mean, um, you come back here and it's a little bit like New Zealand in the old days. They're very club rugby focused, very grassroots focused. They actually love their team. They think they've got a chance. You know, they've got some superstars now and players like Finn Russell. And they really think that, you know, they're going to break this hoodoo. And I'm just going, nah. And what it does do to it, it suits your dress code. Yeah. I mean, everything. Look, you, at that. look at that. Look at that, people. Everyone thinks it's my tartan. I said, no way. It's just style. It's just, just, just style. Like it. it's <laughs> your style. Well, we'll see the All Black style will be on here Sunday afternoon at Edinburgh. Looking forward to it. Could be a great contest.